Hello, everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of these continued implications of the way that they changed a visual reconnaissance. Now, from for a couple weeks ago, we did a little video basically showing off how there's this new kind of search range versus identification versus queuing range, all built into visual sensors. Now, I've been playing around with that a little bit for a little while now, trying to really sort of explore sort of the consequences and implications of something like that. And we've found a bunch of different things that are actually very, very interesting about it. So to show some of these differences off, what I've actually done is grabbed a bunch of different reconnaissance units, and we're going to take a look at them and kind of see sort of what it's like trying to do blind reconnaissance in sort of the way that everything's kind of come together, as well as a couple tactics that you might be able to employ to make them a little bit better. So first things first, uh, we know we have some units over here that we're interested in investigating. And we're going to go ahead and send our lucky uh, O1 bird dog here. Now, many of you are sitting there going, probably not the platform I'd want to be flying over water like this. And I agree. I agree completely. That would be <laughs> suicide or uh, at least, very least not recommended. So let's take a look at what we have on this lovely bird dog here. We have none other than a Mark 1 eyeball, which has a 15 mile. I can see it if you tell me where it is range. And a 50 mile, if it's big enough and you tell me where it is, I can see it range. So what we're going to do is we're going to get within 50 miles. Hachoo! And I'll go, whoa, helps if you actually press the right button there. Boop, boop. There we go. Nice. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to get within the range of this target. And there's a bunch of different targets down here. We actually have lots of stuff to see. So our assumption here is that our little uh, spotter plane will be able to see some of the objects down there. Now, what you're probably observing is uh, we've got a distance right now of about 12 nautical miles. And there are buildings, and for some reason we can't see any of those buildings. Now, the reason we can't see any of those buildings is because we have weather between us and the target area. As a matter of fact, if we hit the F2 key real quick, you'd see that we've got a bunch of clouds in there. Oh, let's see here. We'll have to take a look. Our altitude of our clouds are 25 to 20. Actually, we should be pretty good. Uh, that's going to bother us later on, I'm sure, though. So let's get a little bit closer. Again, this is using the old Mark 1 eyeball. I'm just looking out the window. Uh, what can I see? Honestly, if you want to take an O1 up that high, I am very impressed. I'm going to bring him down to medium altitude here, so he's a little bit of time. Oh, come on. My emergency descents and assist on 172 are faster than that. 90 knots? Yeah, right. I can do that so much more aggressively. So this is using the good old Mark 1 eyeball. There are tons of targets and objects down here, all that we like to take a look at. But you can see our lovely airplane here is pretty darn close. We're about 12,000 feet up now, and we're about three and a half miles away from the target region, so to speak. And we still haven't acquired anything. And we went flying right on by. But the reality is, look at how much stuff was here. And we didn't see any of it. So I'm going to go ahead and order my aircraft to take a nice little banking turn here. We'll drop them down to 5,000 feet. Remember, we're only using the good old-fashioned Mark 1 eyeball here. There's no special reconnaissance pods, nothing. Uh, the other thing you need to know about the O1 here, which is, I think, kind of a neat little example of how this can get complicated really, really quick, is our visibility is amazing out the front and the side, but pretty doo-doo out the back. So we're going to go ahead and drop his altitude here. I'll get him a little bit lower. A little bit lower. So now he's about eh, 7,000 feet AGL. And we're just starting to spot some of the different buildings down here. As a matter of fact, now that we're seeing them, we're starting to spot the really big buildings, which are things like our hospital. And we're in range. Pause. So you can see our lovely little eyeball here. We had to get within about a mile to start spotting things. And the other thing you probably observed here is it didn't pick up any of the units. So, oh, 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 nope, that's just a few more of the buildings. And we're just going to cruise right over the top here. And uh, they're not going to shoot at us or anything like that. But we actually missed a lot of stuff down here. All right, you've done a very nice job, O1. Oh, good job. Uh, let's go ahead and grab something a little more modern. There we go. That'll do it. So now we have ourselves a lovely FA-18. Um, we're going to go ahead and order him to go ahead and get into position. Uh, first things first, though, we still have that blocking cloud layer that's going to be giving us a little bit of frustration here. So I'm actually going to order him to drop below that cloud layer here just to kind of make it a little bit easier. And we actually got some moderate clouds. Uh, uh, who set this weather forecast? Why would you do that to me, man? Don't do that to me. So this F-18 has got a couple different bells and whistles on it, which is going to help make it a little bit easier to do this little reconnaissance exercise here. So if I click over here and actually take a quick look, you'll see that I've got some good toys. I've got the ANAPG-73, which is it's good radar, pretty modern. I've got the ALRs. I don't need that. I've got the little Mark 1 eyeball, which we've already proven to be not worthless, but maybe a little underpowered. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Of course, if you've been looking very closely, you'll notice it's about 6.30 in the evening here. That's uh, probably another element that maybe you missed, but that's okay. 
So scrolling on down here, um, we'll go see what we have. We also have a pod to help us out here. So let's grab that pod real fast. Here we go. So this one has got a little bit better look around range, but it also has the ability to zoom in significantly better. So if I actually just sit here and I'll just grab my flur real quick here, and I'll see here we have 30 nautical miles. So that means we can't actually detect things. We can only identify, but you'll notice we have a 20, not a 20 times zoom for the purposes of identification. So let's go ahead and get ourselves in a position here. I'll sneak up just a little bit. There we go. That yeah, looks pretty good. So we're pretty far away at this point. Remember, we need about 15 miles on this to be able to start picking out individual targets. So let's get a little bit closer here. So this is about 24 nautical miles away. Whoa, hey, ooh. that's a little bit too close. I'll get a little bit out, about 24. We've got about a distance of about six or seven nautical miles now. So we're well within look out the pod kind of range here. And you can see that we're not having the best time of it. Now we're probably going to sail right over the heads of everybody. And they're not even going to know that we were here kind of a thing like that. Uh, there we go. Oh, 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 take it back. We've detected a lot. So you can actually see here, we picked up the buildings. Uh, that was a range of about three nautical miles. That's pretty darn close. But uh, we do identify many of the buildings. So I'll actually order him to go fly right down the middle here and see if he's able to pick up. Oh, see, he's even able to measure their quality. He's probably going to identify the specific names of the buildings and stuff. So we definitely have a huge advantage here as far as classification goes, which is actually really, really good for us. So if we fly right over the top here, you're going to notice that um, we picked up a lot of stuff, but uh, we still did not pick up those ground units. We'd probably have to drop them down a little bit lower. So let's try that again, but with a slight wrinkle. All right, this time we're going to flip on his search radar. Watch what happens. So now he's got a radar. And did you notice a millisecond after I flipped that radar on that every, almost every single target that I wasn't sure of, I instantaneously was able to recognize. Uh, the next thing you're going to notice, and uh, this is where it gets really kind of cool, is as we close into our range to be able to use our FLIR for identification, now that we've been cued to where the target actually is, we'll be able to lock onto that target directly. So let's go ahead and drop below that uh, cloud layer here because we don't want that cloud layer to be blocking our view. Get a little bit closer here. I drop down just a tiny bit. Ah, that's a weak drop down. You could do better than that. There we go. So now that we're under the cloud layer, we can actually flip on our FLIR. So we've identified these targets using our radar, which is actually really, really impressive. I'm not going to lie. I did not know the FA-18A had quite that radar capability here. Now notice we got a little tiny bit closer and we're able to get even more information here. We know that we're dealing with some armor. Obviously, we haven't identified the armor. We just know there's armor down here. So because the radar cued my visual sensor, I'm able to get a great look at this area before I'm even able to kind of do its little recce here. So we're going to get a little tiny bit closer. I don't think we're going to get a positive enemy ID here. It's just going to show up as a tank on Flare at this particular point. Yep. Oh, there we go. Look at that. That was a range of, um, let's see here. I'm pretty close. That's about a mile and a half away. We were actually able to identify whose side these vehicles were on. Now, one of the things you probably notice is we're in a cropland here, which doesn't have a massive penalty to us identifying things, but you can see exactly just how close we had, but we were still able to get a little bit closer. Now, there's another type of reconnaissance we can do as well, and that's with this little guy here. Uh, this is a Eurofighter Typhoon. Now, the reason I really, really like this aircraft for this purpose is because it has a tremendously good radar on board. It's, um, you know, the one in the F-18, it's pretty good. This thing is, like, ridiculous. So let me get a little bit closer here. I'm just going to kind of zoom in. Looks pretty good. I'm not going to change my altitude or anything, but what I am going to do is I'm going to flip on his radar real quickly here. So now this thing, as you can see, whoop, look at this. <laughs> at this distance, uh, we were able to instantaneously identify the presence of all the mobile units immediately and identify them as mobile units and immediately identify all the different, actually not identify, recognize all those different units that are down there on the ground. Now, the challenge here is the identification, like actually classification. So we have a general idea of who it is, but um, we have a general idea of kind of what it is, but we don't know specifics here. Uh, we're basically uh, using this very, very sophisticated radar to sort of like look, almost like a synthetic aperture radar, trying to just analyze this. So right now, the pilot, if he's in super duper duper zoom mode, he's kind of looking at this target here, looking at the side of it. He's kind of looking at the general size of it and trying to just work it out what exactly he's looking at. And the best the pilot knows now is there's a vehicle or something down there. Now notice the range we picked those targets up is incredible, but we still don't have that critical piece, which is being able to know who's whom down here. So our little aircraft, I'm just going to have them fly right over the tippy top here. Uh, we didn't bring any special pods, but so remember that we have the disadvantage here that because we're not under that cloud layer, we can't actually see it. Did you also notice how everybody dropped off? 
Uh, the reason for that, of course, is this radar can't point straight down. So as we got close, we actually lost sight of everybody because of the physical limit of the radar's beam, or the uh, electronic limit, I should say. So now, how does this go if you want to use a pure, sophisticated camera system? Well, that's when you get something like this. Now, one of the reasons I like this aircraft still, despite it's uh, getting a little bit old at this particular point, and many point people will point out the fact you can't even get one of these anymore because they stopped using them, is because of its tremendously, tremendously powerful cameras. Now, if I were actually to click on this and open up its little uh, recce page here, let me go ahead and close that real fast, scroll down just a little bit, you'll notice we do have a very sophisticated surface search radar, but we also have these TOX here. These things have an 80 nautical mile range. Now, one of the interesting problems you'll probably notice, no minimum range, but we have this massive, massive uh, max range. And of course, we can IFF and we can even classify with this with automatic classification. So one of the problems we're going to have here, of course, is those pesky clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and order these clouds to get back out of our way here. Uh, go away, clouds. Nobody likes you. I'm using film here. Let me, give me a break. Give me a break. Now, the reason this is so fascinating is I'll go ahead and I'll get a little closer here. Just kind of cruise along, cruise along. Uh, we immediately start picking out individual targets here. Uh, one of the things is we already knew where this was. So now we're just, <laughs> that's basically what the picture would look like. So I actually sort of appreciate that. Now, little, little things like that. So we're going to basically cruise on over. Notice how we're not detecting the buildings or anything like that. As a matter of fact, as we pop over the top here, you're going to notice we're not going to detect almost anything. Let me line ourselves up just a little bit more here. We're going to sail right over the roof here. Remember, we have this really sophisticated camera's pause. There we go, get a little bit closer. And you can see at a range of about five nautical miles, we were able to identify a lot of information here. First of all, if you were a building, we instantaneously recognized you. Second, all these mobile units, even though we don't know whose team they're on because we can't read the flag off the side of the uh, tank, we still have the ability to recognize generally what kind of mobile unit it is. Now, if I unpause here and I kind of fly over the top, let's uh, finish up my little operation here. How y'all doing, y'all? <laughs> Yeah, come get this thing. <laughs> You're not going to be able to lay a finger on it. And we'll just fly right over the top. So we got a lot of critical information. So how do we put this all together? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, because of the new limitation, or actually the realistic limitation, of these new visual sensors without being cued, it now means we need to kind of combine forces in order to be able to successfully work out reconnaissance without putting yourselves in danger. Let's see what that looks like. All right, let's make some teamwork. So I'm going to grab a handy dandy modern radar platform here. I'm going to go ahead and flip on its radar. When he flips on his radar, he'll immediately identify or be able to see all those different units down there on the ground. Now, as you know, we have ourselves a handy SR-71 right here, which has a very, very long range camera on board. Now, the reason this is like an ultimate pairing here is because this one can provide the queuing information that the other one requires. So even though we're a massive distance away, that radar is already starting to kind of pick these little pieces up. So what's going to happen next is our buddy with the SR-71 with those really, really, really strong cameras will now be able to basically fly over the target and they'll work together where the uh, radar on the one platform will cue the cameras on the other platform. Uh, that provides a tremendous advantage from a tactical perspective because now you can basically kind of stay out of the way to increase your visual detection range at the same time as increase your identification range without putting anybody in harm's way. Now one of the downsides though of course is our old school camera is relatively limited in its uh, field of view here. So one of the ways we can actually cheat here, let me go ahead and pop this guy out here. Let me grab my F-18 buddy. Uh, hey there F-18 buddy, can I borrow you for a sec? There we go, thank you so much. So if you remember our F-18, let me actually click on him real fast. I had that really, really nice little pod on board. So let's go ahead and take a look at that pod one more time, Lightning AT. Hey, that looks familiar from DCS. So if you take a look at the sucker now, you'll notice that it's got that 20 nautical miles, but it has this 30 nautical mile capability of looking if it knows where to look. So one of the cool things here is, let me zoom out about 30 nautical miles. It's gonna be, let's call it right there. Go ahead and just pop that in. Let's speed up time a little bit. Now remember, the radar on the left is providing us with where the guy on the right should be looking with his cameras. So we're going to get a little bit closer here. He's going to go ahead and cross that line. And what will happen is um, we're a little bit out of range as far as the classification goes. Uh, the being, reason being is we have to get a little bit closer. But now this unit here is being cued by this unit here as he starts to approach the actual target area. So as he gets closer, what he's doing right now is he's looking through his little uh, camera pod and he's uh, s focusing right on these coordinates that this buddy over here is basically cueing him onto so that he can do the most important part, which is uh, making sure you're not blowing up the wrong target kind of a thing here. So we're basically going to cruise right over the tippy 
top here. I'm actually, I believe we still have some weather involved here. Let me go shut the weather off for a second here. Unfortunately, I always forget that detail. Oh, weather's off. I was right. All right, coming a little bit closer. And there we have that initial classification from a longer distance. Again, we're being provided with some information as to where to look from this chap. And this one's going to be kind of finishing the deed here as far as uh, doing that last minute kind of piece there. And he just pops right over the top. So you can see how these two units now can work together for the purposes of uh, doing reconnaissance, especially if something is completely unknown. Uh, one of the things that you probably saw, which I thought was very impressive, is that this F-18, even though it's an older platform, when you combine a really good surface radar with a really good targeting pod, you're basically an all-in-one reconnaissance vehicle, which is actually really cool if you think about it, because it provides you with almost more, you know, basically, uh, veracity is not really the word, but kind of what I'm saying, fidelity, there we go, uh, than our good old-fashioned buddy here with the Mark 1 eyeball, or even our SR-71, which while it had a really, really good time taking things from such a high altitude and high speed, it was really limited in that critical step of identification. Enjoy.